Welcome, this tutorial is about the timer and countdown, where you optionally can show a text when it finished. So little note before we start, this is an almost empty project. The only thing that is in here is a basic HUD setup, so a widget that will be created and added to the viewport at begin play. So a widget where we can place our timer later. Uh, yeah, if you don't know how to set up such a HUD, just check out this tutorial. And then I would say we can start. So first of all, create a new user interface widget blueprint, user widget, and call it wb underscore timer. Then open it and change it here from fill screen to desired. Then as a very first element here, we are adding a widget switcher. And in this widget switcher, a text, and another text. The first text I'm calling t underscore time. And the second text I'm calling t underscore goal text. And the goal text should be just a text that will be shown once a certain goal is reached. So for example, once the countdown is over, then that there just pops up a small text, for example, start or finished or so. And for this goal text, Let's also maybe make it another color. And I now want to add a new animation for popping up the goal text. So I'm calling this a underscore goal text pop up. Then select this animation. I make also sure that the T goal text here is selected. Then we can scroll down here and under transform. We can set the scale to zero and zero here at the time of zero and set the keyframe. Then we're going further, maybe 0.2 seconds to then set the scale to one on both. Then for how long you wanna have the gold text here to be shown, let's say two seconds. I'm setting here another keyframe still at one on both and then after 0.2 seconds I'm setting the scale to zero on both and a keyframe. Then I'm clicking out of this animation here so for example here that we are not selecting this animation anymore and now we can set our goal text here by default to have a scale of one on both again to just see it here in the editor. Then make sure that all three elements here are a variable. So click on the first one here and set is variable to true. Then go to the other two is variable true and the widget switcher is variable true. Then we can go to the graph, then create a new function and call it set time and create a new variable that you also call just time and set a type here from boolean to time span. Then in here we want to set the time and make it, make time span and connect then the hours with the first node, the minutes and the seconds. So these three pins are created and it's connected back here. Then we are breaking the time here and going in here first with the T time text, setting the text and adding here a format text. Then for the format, we're going in with a curly bracket First with hour, then colon, then again curly brackets, minute, colon, and finally second. And for that one, we're going in here with uh, first of all the hours. I'm converting this to text, to text integer. And then connecting this here with the hour 
and expanding this and make sure that the minimum integral digits are set to 2. And if you set this to 2, then duplicate this to text node. So it's also here 2. And for the seconds as well, and connect here the minutes with minute and the seconds here with second. This one now includes the hours, but uh, let's make it that if we have some hours, then it should show it like this, like including the hours. But if we have only minutes or even only seconds, so let's say our timer is only 10 seconds or our countdown, then it should not include the hours in our format here. And to do that, we copy this whole thing here, paste it up here, and removing this hours thing here and checking if the hours are zero. And in case the hours are zero, we're adding a new branch and connecting the true pin with the set text and the false pin here with the other set text. And we wanna remove here this one, the hour and the column here. We have only minute and second left. Then make sure to connect the time span here also with the time. I'll create a new variable and we call this timer handle and set it here to timer handle. Then we're creating a new function and call this pause timer. And here we're getting now our timer handle and checking if that is valid. And if that is valid, then we want to pause timer by handle. Then we create a new function and call this clear timer. And here we are just getting our timer handle and say clear and invalidate timer by handle. Then another function we're calling set goal. And here we are now adding a new variable. And we call this time goal. And setting this here to time span. Then we set this goal in this function here, make this time span, and connect the hours, minutes, and seconds with the first node. So it looks like this. And we set the uh, T goal text. So get this and set text. Connect us here, and we're connecting this in text here also with the first node. Maybe we can rename this here down here to goal text. Then let's create a new function and call it start timer. And here we're creating now a new or creating a new variable and calling this e forward. And setting this to a boolean so whether our timer should count up so true or on false like if it should be a normal countdown so we set this here connect this with the starting node so it creates here the pin and it's connected then i'm getting the widget switcher and set the active widget index to zero so we're making sure it will be on the t time text on so the first element zero. Then I'm getting the timer handle and checking if that is valid. And if true, then we're getting our timer handle and saying unpause timer by handle 
And if it's not valid, then we need to set the timer from new. So we go here and say set timer by function name. And we're getting now here our timer handle. Set this and connect this with the return value. And for the time, we are going in with one second and make sure looping is ticked. For the function name, we're going here with update each second. Then copy this completely. So copy this and create here a new function that you're naming the same. So it's exactly the same. And here, first of all, we need to get time and search for add using this one and make here the time span. And now we're getting the forward Boolean. And for the seconds, we're gonna select, getting the select down here, connecting this forward with the wildcard. And if it counts forward, then we wanna, so on true, then we wanna add one second to our time. And if this is false, so counting down, then we wanna subtract. So adding minus one to the time. And then we are breaking this here, break time span, and calling now our set time function, connecting this here, and connect the hours, minutes, and seconds like so. Then the timer is already should already work, but now we want to go here and check once the goal is reached, that then stuff should happen. So we're adding here a branch, getting our time and getting our time goal, and check if they are equal. And connect this here with the branch. And on true, first of all, we are adding here a new, new sequence node, going in with the first pin here. And there we wanna say clear timer. Then we wanna check if the goal text is, or getting the text first, get text here, check if that is empty because when this is empty then we don't want to make use of the gold text because yeah we don't want to show nothing so we're checking if this is empty and in case this is not empty then we say uh, set active widget index of our widget switcher set active widget index to one this time so where our final text is located or goal text and what we also want to do is getting the animation a underscore goal text pop up getting it here and trigger the play animation node then create a new event dispatcher and call this on timer reached goal. And call this here on the sequence, the other pin, call and connect this here. And this will come in handy, you will see it in a bit. But before we check this out, let's go here to the event graph and on event preconstruct, we're calling the set time node and we're setting this just to 000. zero, zero. And if you compile this and go to the designer, by default, it's also true on this function now in the editor already or on event we can play. And we can see here the timer at zero, zero. So then let's go to your uh, UI, wherever you wanna integrate the timer. So I'm going to this widget here, just an empty widget only with a canvas panel right now and is created and added to the viewport on event we can play and uh, 
this widget here I'm or in this canvas panel here I'm adding now our timer and setting the anchor maybe here to top center and the position zero the alignment here on 0.5 and minus 2 maybe and the size to content on true and now it's perfectly centered up here then we can go to the graph uh, before we do that make sure our timer widget here is variable true so we can use it in the graph we go to the graph and on event construct getting here our timer and we can say now set goal so let's say our goal is at zero seconds and the goal text we leave this empty for now and then uh let's say here um set time so default time where it should start because we want to create a countdown let's say it starts at five seconds and then start timer and yeah forward i want to count down so i leave this also on false and then we can just test it now so it's counting down and now it just stops at zero seconds so now we can add a goal text here so i'm typing in there something like for example start leaving everything like this and also want to demonstrate to you when we go into the design tab and selecting our timer here we're scrolling down you have here the events tab and there on timer reached goal so if we're adding this you could also do something if the timer reaches goal in the tutorial i'm just printing a text here and say goal reached and if we play now another time then you can see here goes here to zero and prints in the top left corner here goal reached and also printed here the starting goal text and yeah same we can now say here we want to count up let's maybe start start already at one hour zero seconds or yeah that looks fine and if we start now at one hour then you can see that the timer here also now includes the hours yeah that was the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it i hope i was able to help you with that and then i'll catch you in the next one